A reading from the writings of St. Peter Julian Emard, the month of the Blessed Sacrament continued. Our devotion must be strong and solid and must tend to a single object. Why do not a greater number of devout persons attain noteworthy <coughs> sanctity? Because they have no unity in their piety. They have not enough food to provide for the nourishment and growth of their spirit of piety. They do not know how to draw up for themselves a set of truths to live by. You are aware what excellent results a mission produces in a parish which had hitherto remained deaf to the pressing exhortations and the heroic example of its pastor. The reason is that a mission is nothing other than an uninterrupted succession of exercises. It makes use of all the means capable of touching the heart, striking the imagination, and forcing one to serious reflection. A mission is a torrent of grace formed by a gathering together of all the means of salvation. Is it surprising that it triumphs over the most hardened hearts? When all our thoughts and exercises of piety are brought together and concentrated on a single object, they lead us to the highest virtue and overthrow every obstacle. Let us then have a devotion that is concentrated and continuous. It is said that to correct a bad habit or an ingrained vice we must first be vigilant and fight against ourselves for some time before starting a movement of progress toward the opposite virtue. Once this initial start is given, we move ahead with giant strides. The same holds good for the subject in which we are presently interested. It will take some time before we succeed in loving with a strong and enlightened love the most blessed sacrament, the mother and queen of all other devotions and the sunlight of piety. Devotion to Mary is good and excellent, but it must tend to be related to devotion to the Eucharist, just as Mary herself tends and is wholly related to Jesus Christ. Scripture fittingly compares her with the moon, which receives all its light from the sun and reflects it back to the sun. Spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as one who has already come and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. A reading from the Imitation of Mary. True friendship, the believer speaks. A faithful friend, says scripture, is a rich treasure. That gift is given only to those who fear the Lord. Mary, God enabled you to find that priceless treasure in Elizabeth, and she found it in you. Each of you provides a model of perfect friendship, of holy friendship that was free of all that corrupts human friendships. A happy similarity of sentiments, religious sentiments linked you together. Grace and virtue were the gifts you valued in Elizabeth and the gifts she valued in you. You spoke frequently to each other, confided in each other, offered each other advice, and competed in serving each other. But all the proofs of friendship which you offered each other had a single unlimited, ultimate purpose, the glorification of God. Elizabeth must have seen that after she had become united in spirit to you, 
her relationship to God was deeper than before. You, Holy Virgin, made the same progress in holiness while in your cousin's house that you would have made in the solitude of Nazareth. You were content with the union between you and broke off your visit without ceasing to love each other. The virtue that unites two hearts cannot fall victim to inconstancy. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Seat of Wisdom.